So in the world of machine learning, there's a process of quantization. This is the ability to use small numbers that use smaller bits to increase the uh, the amount you can compute in any given uh, you know set of time. So when we're talking about gigaflops and gigaops and teraops and petaops, this is the ability to take reduced precision format math and just accelerate it multiple times than it would do if it was the full double precision that we're all used to in programming. Now. In machine learning, numbers like FP16, BrainFloat16, in 8 have been all the rage of late because they've offered substantial speed ups while giving the same accuracy. Well, Nvidia, in their latest announcement of Blackwell, have showcased two new formats coming that can be used to help accelerate some of those math workloads. However, there's a twist. What Jensen Huang announced at the GTC event is support for FP6 and FP4 formats. This means floating point precision in six bits and four bits, with the goal that you can just get many more operations if you're using fewer bits. However, there's a problem. In a floating point number format, you have four bits to play with. One of those is a sign bit. Is it positive? Is it negative? Then you have another bit to basically say if you're an infinity or not. And then that leaves you with two bits to go around the whole range of numbers. And this is a floating point format. So you've got to support decimals with only two bits. In this format, one plus 0 0.5 equals two. I'll put a list on the screen. There is literally only about six operations you can do with this format. But the goal here is that that's enough to do some machine learning and a particularly inference, the ability to take these large models and uh, be able to use them on devices with low power, with a low amount of math, and still be accurate. Now, research is still being done to see whether FP6 or FP4, these low precision formats, are as accurate as they need to be for everyday use. However, what the key thing that NVIDIA have announced with this chip is microscaling. Microscaling is important, and it's something that we saw come out of Microsoft research a few years ago. This is, instead of having the four bits to represent your number, you also use another eight bits as a scaling factor. The way I like to describe this is, say you're doing a bunch of math and your accuracy needs to be between zero and 10. Um, that's fine because you're you know, at the root of the number line, you're standing, you know, your numbers start from zero and they spread out from there. However, if your numbers are between 3000 and 3010, you have no accuracy, you have no range, and your math isn't going to work. What if you could take your region of interest on the number line over to start, at, essentially start at the number 3000? So that 3000, 3010 contains all your math and you've essentially scaled your accuracy and your range to that number. This is the point of this microscaling feature. Now, it was, again, as I said, demonstrated by Microsoft, thought of by Microsoft, at least that's where I found it first, in this format called MSFP12. So you have an FP4 format, and you have this 8-bit scaling, but that scaling factor in those 8 bits actually applied to 12 different FP4 values. That means you only have to pay the penalty of those eight bits once. Now, what NVIDIA is doing here is something similar. However, you can support 32, or 16, 32, and 64 FP4 values, if I remember correctly, with one of these eight-bit scaling features. And the point is, if, if you have 32, 64, 128, or 10,000 operations in this scaled region of interest that apply to all the numbers in that machine learning matrix, you only pay that scaling penalty once. This makes features like FP4 and FP6 able to scale up and down the number line where that accuracy is needed. We've seen it on two other processors. One of them is Tesla Dojo, and they had a really good slide, I'll throw it up on the screen, showcasing that they can support ranges from 2 to the negative 64 all the way up to 2 to the 64 with this uh, scaling format. And also Microsoft on the uh, Maya AI100 chip. Um, exact details we still need to learn about, but they support this sort of scaling factor as well. It's becoming one of the requirements, one of the standards in the industry as part of reduced precision formats. The only difficulty here 
it's kind of like with FP8. If you're familiar with the, with the industry and all these different formats, you'll know that there's about eight different versions of FP8. And what I mean by this is when you have a number format, even a standard number format, like a standard FP64 double precision, you need to know where your infinities are. You need to know where your not a numbers are. You need to understand what happens when you do division by zero, denormals. There are some number formats that have a positive zero and a negative zero. You know, get around that for a second. When you have start playing with these reduced precision formats, everybody's doing something slightly different, which makes some of the consistency in the mathematics also very difficult to manage between architectures. We have a standards body called uh, IEEE that deals with these standards. We have IEEE, uh, stand I think it's IEEE 754 for FP64 and FP32. They're working on 16-bit and I believe they're also working on 8-bit. It's a slow standards body to catch up and machine learning is a very fast moving industry, which means that standards like this FP4 and this microscaling, I do think we need to come up with better names to describe what we're doing here. Uh, but this is going to be some of the standards moving forward. As AMD launches you know, their next RD, uh, CDNA4, or we have uh, more from Intel in the, in the Gaudi processor line, we're also going to see a large number of these uh, cut down, uh, quantized, reduced precision formats, and some of these scaling formats. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see where everybody, everybody ends up when the dice stop moving. My minimum specification here is this needs to be simplified. For the programmers who are in the weeds, who are dealing with the math on a very fundamental basis, it's very difficult and very complex very quickly. One could argue that some of this is abstracted away through the frameworks such as TensorFlow and PyTorch. However, in speaking with a lot of companies dealing with these large models, while TensorFlow and PyTorch are great for learning and they're great for understanding, if you need to extract every jewel of performance, you may be using something a bit more complicated. There's a barrier to entry with that in terms of uh, skill and talent and knowledge, but the benefits out of it are millions of dollars. So with these reduced precision formats, we need clear cut guidelines, how they're being implemented and what it means. I'll show up that graph again of just the six or, six or so operations you can do with this FP4 format. So as long as those are well-defined and everybody understands them, we need this industry to come together and find the right way to explain how these work and why these work.